it's no secret that Game Pass is bursting with value. With AAA titles like Doom, Outer Worlds, Star Wars Fallen Order, even high praised indie titles like Enter the Gungeon, Ori, Streets of Rage and the list just goes on. I think it's safe to say that Game Pass is easily the best deal in gaming right now. With so many games to choose from, it's easy to miss out on these smaller titles. So, in this video, I'll be showcasing 3 hidden gems you shouldn't miss out on and well worth a download. Like always, like and subscribe if you want to support the channel, it really does help and don't forget to hit the notification bell to know when a new video goes live. Thank you for your support. The first game up is Katana Zero. In this 2D platformer you play as a katana wheeling assassin, running around killing everything in one hit. Sounds easy right? Well the same can be said for you, with not a single health bar in sight. Being hit once will return you right back to the start of the level. If you're looking for a challenging fast paced action game, this is definitely for you. Trial and error are every bit as important as the platforming aspect. Dying and restarting, but remembering the enemy's patterns second or third time round almost bends the action into a puzzle type game. As great as it feels to slice through the enemies with your sword, rolling to dodge the shotgun blast, you actually can slow down time at any point. You'll have to be careful though, using slow-mo has a long cooldown and you won't be able to abuse it. The number of awesome things you can do is insane, by far my favourite reflecting bullets back at the enemy. I must have done this around 100 times and it never gets old. Aside from the bread and butter mechanics, they throw in a few different ones to mix it up a bit, like riding on a car on tracks, flicking switches to keep it on the rails, or even jumping off to kill enemies in time to jump back on it later. Some levels require you to take a stealthy approach, hiding in nightclubs not to be seen. It's sections like this that are common enough for the game not to feel stale. The story isn't half bad either, between missions you'll talk to your boss, who also happens to be your therapist, going through your traumatic past to reveal secrets, soon after that you'll be given a list of different names to kill for your next target. A nice addition was the optional dialogues while talking to the CPUs. It's nothing groundbreaking that deeply impacts the story, but having the option to talk to people or piss someone off is amusing in itself. I know these days it isn't anything new but the pixelated style looks absolutely stunning for me and out of all the games we're talking about today, Katana Zero easily has the best soundtrack. It absolutely nails it for each level. With my second game you need to play is a lot different. No fighting, no crazy soundtracks, just you, your bike going down a few mountains. Of course, I'm talking about lonely mountains down here. I'll be honest, I never knew about this game until it was recommended to me. I enjoyed this game so much, I'm now recommending it to you guys. It starts off simple, ride down mountains to avoid trees, rocks and such to get to the end. You pedal with RT, brake with LT and you can even boost with A to gain more speed. What stands out though is you're mainly controlling the front wheel with the left analog stick. With fixed camera angles it takes some time coming to grips with. Sometimes you'll push left on the pad only to see your character crash into a tree on his right. You'll have to be aware you're controlling the handlebars and not the bike itself. So depending on the point of view of the camera you'll need to adjust. Don't worry though this only takes around 5 minutes to get the hang of. After that it makes complete sense. The controls feel tight and perfectly done. It will be hard to top the feeling of skidding around a sharp corner with perfect precision. There's 4 mountains with 4 tracks for each one. It might sound short but I assure you that's far from the truth. The amount of content this game has is fantastic which goes hand in hand with the progression system. There's so many tasks and challenges to complete before you can move on to the next. First, you'll simply be asked to complete the course at your own pace to get the feel for the mountain. Then you'll have to beat challenges like not crashing under a certain amount of times. Let me get this out of the way now, you will crash over and over again. My favourite being time trials. 
by far the best aspect of Lonely Mountains is the freedom to go off course to create your own shortcuts to cut seconds off your time. Something that will help is the rewards of optional challenges that can unlock new bikes that exceed in different areas. Some are better at speed, while some are great at control. There's a lot of different bikes to unlock to play the way you want. The art style is spot on. The bike rider has a blocky charm to him that only helps the mountains pop even more. Nothing but the wildlife life and waterfalls accompany you. You really do feel like you're alone on these mountains. Although there's no soundtrack, the sound of the bike drifting over pebbles rolling off the cliff is so satisfying. It's something that never gets old. Donut County is one of the wackiest, endearing games I've ever seen. I've played titles when you play as a shark, I've even played as a goose before. Never ever thought I'd be controlling a hole, let alone recommending it as part of this video. But here we are, so let's try and break it down a bit so it makes a little bit more sense. At the start of each level you control a small hole on the floor. Moving around trying to drop anything you can see to fall in if your hole is big enough. For every object you swallow up your hole gets bigger. This alone is super satisfying causing destruction around the city. Going from rocks to cars to buildings is quite the sight. As fun as this is, there's puzzles to be solved. As you get deeper into the game, you will start coming across key items that can all be played around with. Filling up the hole with elements like fire and water to do several things all result in you gaining more stuff to eat up. That's the name of the game really. Consume as much as you can. It's simple but fun and even harder to put down. If you don't have a lot of time to play, well I can tell you now that Donut County is around 2 hours long so there's no issues in that department. Seriously, it's not the addictive gameplay that makes this game so great, it's the characters and story. All characters are silly, quirky personalities. With the story taking place underneath the surface, with a group of animals sat around a campfire, talking about how they got stuck in the hole in the first place. Well, the short answer is this guy. This hilarious raccoon named BK is delivering donuts, but instead delivering holes just so he can level up on his phone and his app. By no doubt, I'm sure you've noticed by now, the story is off the walls and silly in a heartwarming sense. Hearing everyone trash talk BK down, and even better hearing BK's blatant denial and self-centered sorry of an excuse made my day. It would be hard not to be charmed by any of these characters. Donut County is a hole in one in terms of gameplay and story and is well worth your time. So did you enjoy any of these games? Let us know in the comments below. More importantly, let me know what Game Pass game I need to play for my next video. I'll even give you a shout out. I hope you enjoyed at least one of these three games I showcased today. I've been Nathan and as always, I will see you in the next video. GG guys.